Hi, and welcome back to Kaplan USMLE Step 2 CKQ Blast. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we're here yet again with a clinical vignette. As always, we will go through the right and wrong answers and the high yield points to increase your score on the boards and improve your patient care on the wards. Let's get started. A 57 year old female with a history of hypertension comes to the physician because of shortness of breath. She says that she has been experiencing progressively worsening dyspnea while climbing the stairs in her house. She denies both chest pain and dyspnea at rest. She appears comfortable at rest. She is on aspirin and metoprolol. Physical examination shows a regular heart rate and rhythm with absence of murmurs, rubs, but does have an S4. Blood pressure is 150 over 80 and pulse is 55 beats per minute. Pulmonary examination re reveals that there is rouse at the bases. She has lower extremity edema. An echocardiogram shows increased left ventricular filling pressures with a normal ejection fraction. Which of the following is the next best step? Do we treat this patient with candesartan, digoxin, reduce the dose of hermetoprolol, give her verapamil, or follow up with another study, the transesophageal echocardiogram? The correct answer here is A, beginning, beginning candesartan. This patient has hypertension, which has resulted in diastolic left ventricular dysfunction. What we want to do is reduce the afterload with either an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. This has been shown to improve exercise tolerance, although important to show is not improved mortality in patients that have diastolic dysfunction. Digoxin choice B has not been shown to be beneficial in isolated diastolic heart failure. Slowing her heart rate allows more time in diastole and thus more diastolic filling. However, you do not want to decrease the dose of metoprolol, choice C, as her heart rate is right at 55, and that's, a, that's an okay heart rate for this patient, and it also is allowing that increased time. However, we don't want to add a calcium channel block, blocker like calcium or diltiazem because we can decrease that heart rate even further and you don't want to push the heart rate lower than 55 in these patients. The final choice E, transesophageal echo, is not indicated because we already have the diagnosis of diastolic left ventricular failure, which is diagnosed very readily on transthoracic echocardiogram. Let's talk about longstanding hypertension. So hypertension causes advanced hypertrophy and can lead to diastolic left ventricular dysfunction as seen in our patient here. The left ventricle is not filling properly because the concentric hypertrophy prevents the heart from relaxing during diastole. And the relative time spent in diastole is shortened during reflex tachycardia that occurs in these patients. Our key high yield takeaways, the most common etiology of diastolic heart failure is chronic hypertension, leading to left ventricular concentric hypertrophy. Treatment should be aimed at decreasing heart rate to increase the amount of time allowed for ventricular filling. So you can use beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Again, don't let the heart rate drop below 55. Other treatments include ACEs or ARBs, which prevent the remodeling and act to regress some of the hypertrophy. Aldosterone antagonists also prevent and regress hypertrophy and fibrosis. This has been our clinical vignette today. I hope that there has been some high yield topics here that is going to increase your scores on the USMLE boards and help you take better care of patients when they're on the wards. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak. We'll see you again real soon. Take care.